Good morning. Okay. Some of you people have been calling 911 out there. You're an Amber. I do not call 911 every time I hear an Amber Alert because the also those Amber Alert can save your life. You'll think about it. Um, you know what? If you get an Amber Alert, you know what that means? Two of one or two things. Number one, that means of the terrorist activity within the, in your backyard, in your city, your town, or your village. And that means if that happens, you know, you, and you just call them out, that ties up the emergency suit before you, and then let's suppose, you know, that, you know, somebody you really need terrorists, somebody really needs that service, can't get the service, because you can tie it up when I want it, and that person passed away. What What do you think going to happen? Do you want to really know what's going to happen? Well, I'm sorry to say it. Well, that person that would be the Amber out for, or and and that, then you could risk wreck yours in their life to save you, to save you that disaster. Or, for example, Amber Alert goes off. Okay, that kid is in danger. I mean, big, serious danger in kidnap. It does help in finding the people, preventing it. But if an Amber Alert also go off with the terrorism activity, some real far left extremist group like a Taliban and come out to terrorism and decide to get guns and be support and not do terrorist acts within the province, Amber Alert will go off. And we'll hear this on the phone. I'm going to demonstrate a mind here. We'll hear this on a cell phone. And, and he will, um, and we'll hear an alarm like this. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And he will be, and if you're going to complain, you know what? You know what? Real group will come. You hear a line like this on the phone, and you will just sound like this. It may sound different between your model phone or whatever, but please, if you do hear it, and mind again, if you hear it, go to your phone, look at the message. Sometime in the middle of the night, it could be a terrorist activity, it could be uh, that, or it could be an F5 tornado bearing down on, on a house, and you're going for an run. And, so you, and you get killed, you, you found your date in the rubble in the demolished house on F5, and you know what? Because you call 911, what's going to happen? Most of you can't get to you, and for example, you die, and your family's going to be, and be unfortunate you having a, somebody's family have to go to a funeral. You know, you understand that now? I don't want to be going to somebody's funeral over that. Remember, please, don't call 911 if you hear that Amber Alert in your phone. I mean, even on news. And if you right now, I pray, I saying finding out to call that is a good idea in Ontario. But in the United States, they had that for a very long time. Matter of fact, I was in the U.S. about a few years back, and before they even had it in Ontario, and I was heading Rochester, New York. And that, well, it went off on the phone. That Amber Alert did go off. I uh, did, when it happened, okay, I ended up, you know, um, you know, I was on the, was on the public ground, back out of the room here. Amber Alert went off, tornado, Amber Alert in, in the area. Have five tornadoes in the area. And it was like dangerous, take immediate cover. Or, or, um, and I seen it way, way off in the field, but it was moving far uh, object, but moving very north direction. While by the time I made a lock port in New York, uh, there was there were golf ball sized hailstone, extreme heavy rain, a lot of hail, and that. And you know, I just got an edge tail end of it. But lucky for Amber Alert, I would be uh, totally unaware of that danger. See, and that's where Amber Alert comes important. It. Luckily, I able to uh, made it rush out in the restaurant. Not me, but it was it was really bad. 
It was the worst storm that was really pretty low that I want to be the one. And that is not like, you know, um, what I want to see. So Amber Alerts are very important in many ways. Let's suppose an Atlantic Front terrorist organization also got hold of in Ottawa and started to attack Canada. Amber Alerts could go everywhere. It would go 9-1. And before you know it, they may have a, a, the, a screen terror bursting in the house with, with AK-40 with, with real bad taking a prisoner and and you and not, not knowing a terrorist thing. And a country go, and of course our military called out civil war, next we have the military over there, well, what, uh, uh, and he was going on one all the time. Well, I can tie up mercy too. And on top of that, what happens to a military? When you have to, um, what happens to the armed forces, you know, too? They're going to be tied up, and they're going to be tied up trying to put the terror on there. On top of that, they're going to be U.S. war tied up, and then, of course, you who have to mean, yeah, yeah. And see, the Canadian military, their responsibility to protect the civilian at all costs, I mean, uh, and, and a major type of terror attack, a tactical in the state of war, it protects civilians at all costs. That means they put their life on the line. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, whether you are in, uh, whether you can end the world in any nation, whether we are, but you, you could be, I could be in uh, Germany and, and a terrorist attacks Germany. Well, and the Canadian Armed Forces had a base in there. Well, what would happen if, you know, what happened? Well, number one, it, uh, I'm a two finger would do, I'd make it to the nearest army base and uh, uh, immediate protection with the Canadian Army base right off the bat. That's perfect. Next up on country where there was a terrorist attack, well, what are, and then know the UN, no Canadian happy United Nations in that area. Well, I'll make it the nearest UN refu UN run refugee camp to get back to Canada quickly. You know, quickly. That's what our exactly what I would do. Well, actually, let's suppose you are at sea and you're on a cruise ship and sitting back, you're drawing your margarita on, on and on, you're drawing a nice, fun for a day on a cruise ship with all kinds of activity going on. And all of a sudden, the cruise ship overrun by pirates. And not pirates. And, and pirates, modern day pirates, they don't, what they do is, and they, when they, and they howled at sea for months and months and months by these pirates on board. And the cruise ship eventually can get to a point where, where a cruise ship can only add enough fuel to at sea, maybe a couple of months, two, maybe two months at the most. But after a while, it can, it can feel worn out. And it might have enough food to go for up to about uh, a couple of months, you know. They actually cruise it run out of fuel or run out of food, believe it or not, you know. You know, but it's still, it, they get eventually supplies will run out because of that. And but it, and the best friend in the high sea to be the Canadian Navy, <laughs> be best friend. Well, all of a sudden you turn around, you see the Halifax, ain't the Halifax, you see, you Canadian Navy sit in it. Come and they come storm it and they move the pirates in the boat. And we supply you with the boat with we supply food to some food. And put fuel back in all that and we supply it. Now, what the crew trying to do? They have to sail that boat to the immediate port. And it will sail it to the immediate port of call, immediate port where they can and they'll get the passenger off and they will fly them home. Or the Canadian military can put fuel on board a boat and then just and get it to the airport, which they may which they may do. Of course, when they do it, well, yeah, with an act of boat. Well, after pilots are in jail and stuff, and of course, unfortunately for people on board, if I'm on board a ship, I don't have to go to court in uh, in that country testify against the pirates. Put them, and they might they may do they do a long time I bother with that. Especially in uh, countries where where resources ain't that great, you know. The only source of income is piracy, and you don't have good social service. 
the country, but at the UK, a really good show for the UK, believe it or not, you know. Some parts of Europe, if I, if I went to EU, being trans, I would never have a problem. I can go to the EU, and I, have a, I can go to England, and it's very welcome. Matter of fact, even in part, even Thailand, it welcome. I can tell you, countries they ain't welcome in. And then these are these are still embedded. If I went to the country of Dubai, or United Arab Emirates, or Dubai, for example, if I'm LGBTQ, they will. It is a criminal offense to be transgender in no those countries. And believe it or not, it's true. And if you went to the far Middle East where they only speak Arabic, it's actually against the law of being transgender. So, you know, these are rules you got. And plus, if I went to China, the same thing. It's sort of, yes, against the law of being LGBTQ in China, but it's not against the law to get vocal feminization. See? Now, hmm, that's the thing about Chinese. The thing about other Russia and other major other countries. It's okay to be able to be. As a matter of fact, in Finland, it's okay. Uh, I mean, even in uh, Japan, it's okay to be LGBTQ. But they are, trust me, in Australia, LGBTQ. There's definitely LGBTQ people all over the world, in different countries. And in the United States, there's some states that are not good to be LGBTQ, and some of the, it is good. You know, like New York State has a very good policy with the people transgender. Gender the bathroom. They actually have a really good policy that way. With the person who out me, I go to I treat it as a female, not as a man, as a woman. And that throughout New York State well, in, and other states are similar to this, which I haven't visited you know. I know Illinois and and on that area they're not as very much open to it. So I gotta watch but it go for the marker on the birth certificate and in all the United States, I had to research it, they, they ban trans people using the ladies room in certain states. I have to, go, I went and I looked it up. When it says, if it's, if I got, I have that for my birth certificate, gender marker app, there so, that in the United States on a rule to set in these states, by governors, these states say, that sort of would not, cause that would be that if I went into a lady's room in in the USA in the United States, it would, it would really bad. And I even got stopped by a deputy sheriff from that state. I can pull my birthday over to show them. Okay, I see you are being ugly. We are terribly sorry that happened to you. And I heard that's the only reason why I could go for a more version. But, and I said, I know it does, and, you know. <laughs> anyway, so, but the worst place for LTBQ rights to be violated is that the U.S. borders. <laughs> I had a uh, border guard call me wrong phone now a few years, a year ago. Totally wrong phone. I mean, that area needs to be Im improved. In the U.K., the LTBQ person is detained at a border in the United Kingdom. They're detained, then they get questioned just like any other lady be questioned. As a matter of fact, their reason for not sending back or reason for keeping them any longer, they'll send them to, to a woman's facility in the UK, hold them there until they, for a fruit sugar, and if they see they're still an admissible in the UK, and then they put them on a flight and send them home, basically. It, it, they're sending them to a regular detention center, not to a United States. Uh, when you mess with somebody at the border going in at a U.S. border, they don't send you to regular uh, jail facility like a detention center. Or they'll send you to an immigration center even nine times worse and the and what a regular detention center would be in state, nine times worse. It's so bad that you that they will give you candy bars and not even acknowledge your trance. That's how bad it is. But in American jails, I know from that just reading about hearing about it, but not knowing too much. I know I had to do the reading up for one I looked at a couple of uh, I looked at articles online about 
American jail in the upstate New York. Well, and there's an LGBTQ person arrested for crime in um, transgender female arrested for crime out there in New York State. He or she is uh, taken to a uh, treated as a woman, accepted as female, taken to jail, and and we hold for how to the women's section, not in a man's section, women. But if you have border patrol to arrest, they how to the guys. Now, that's, they're two sets of rules. I don't know, you should not need to be saying to it. No. I know, they they say, you may have taxpayers should do that, but uh, get Donald Trump to make that little saying to it, if no, not a case. Anyways, so, my uh, opinion is, Amber Alert do save lives, and if you want to, Remember, if you have a number alert go off on your phone, remember, they will save life. They can, they can also, they go off with a terrorist alert. And if they're terrorist activity, they go off if there's a, a missing person for that, or missing children from uh, Amber Alert, which is common. They go off an F5 tornado bearing there. They go off and got a... Um, a uh, serious flooding situation happening in, in your hood, they will, that will go, that will sound. Voting 911, no. But if you're in real life suffering situation, yes, do it. And don't, and leave the emergency service of those who really need Lex Lexi pulled, I also had a heart attack. I made her, I called 911 and 911 service. They couldn't, I couldn't get through. But somebody else and, and, and Moosey were tied up with a false call. There, so I'm, I, and they find me, I already passed away and now I'm mad, I'm very mad, I'm very mad, because they have to bury me. I get life, I say life for sure, but I bury me anyway. So then, because of that, guess what? Because some stupid person are not, not, not Moosey's situation, guess what? I ended up, you know, dead sea, you know, let's suppose I called on one, and the example, they got there in good time, arrived in really good time, boom. I was brought to hospital time and saved and survived it, then so there, so, because somebody did do it, that's the difference between We'll call 911 news. Somebody call 911 news at Leo or Amber. That is news and calling. And that can be punished for by very serious fine. In the United States, if you do it in the United States, it's punishable by up to $8 million US. And men throughout the United States. In Canada, Ontario, not even that. You know, don't have any of See? But in call 911 news, you can get punished for that. But Amber, look, Nothing. They got to be. The fine got to be very hefty fine, big fine, eight million dollar fines in some states for doing that. Anyway, drug over.